Hi, welcome to this tutorial about multiple imputation for linear regression analysis. In this video I will show you how to use multiple imputation by chained equations, or short MICE, for a multiple regression model in R. Multiple imputation is one of the best methods for handling missing data in regressions, and the MICE package in R makes it quite easy to use this technique. I start with a short recap how multiple imputation works, and then go into the R code for a specific example. Multiple imputation consists of three main steps. The first step, imputing the data. That is, we're taking an incomplete data set and imputing, that is estimating, the missing values. If you want to know more about how this works in theory, there are many good journal articles explaining this technique. In the description of this video you'll find a link to one of those journal articles that I like. The second step, running the regression. So for all our imputation samples, we run regression models. Let's say we have 50 imputations, then we run 50 regressions and get 50 different results, because the imputations differ from each other by chance, because there is a random component involved in multiple imputation. And the third step is pooling we pool those, in our case, 50 regression results into one regression result. And that is the result we report in our paper or in our thesis. Now, let's do it in R. You can find all R code examples I use in this tutorial on a companion web page. The link is in the description. We need the MICE package. If you haven't installed it yet, you have to install it once. I only have to load it with a library command. For this example, we are using a data set from this package. So you can try out multiple imputation with the same data. N harness 2. The 2 is important because there are two variants of this data set in the MICE package. Here are the four variables. H in groups, that is a factor variable. Body mass index as a continuous variable. Hypertension as a factor variable. And cholesterol as a continuous variable. Here a short summary, our two factor variables, our two continuous variables, and here we already see that we have missing values. Looking at the structure, age and hypertension are defined as factor variables and the other two variables as numeric. This is a very important step if you run multiple imputation with this package, because the type of the variable influences the imputation method. So if we hadn't used factor for age and hypertension, we would get a different imputation method and different results, possibly wrong results. So it's really important to make sure that all factor variables are defined as factors if you use multiple imputation by chained equations. Next, let's look at the pattern of missing data. Blue is complete, red is missing. So we have 13 complete cases because blue for all four variables. We have three cases where cholesterol is missing, we have one case where BMI is missing, and so on. Before we run a multiple imputation, as a comparison we, ru we could run a normal regression, that is with listwise exclusion of missing data. Here we see 12 observations deleted due to missingness. So this is a regression only with 13 cases, that is, with the 13 complete cases. Now let's start with the imputation. For that we use the MICE function, our data set, the number of imputations. One rule of thumb is at least as many imputations as the percentage of missing cases. And here we have about 50% missing, so I would use 50. Max it the maximum number of iterations, because multiple imputation is an iterative process, and normally from my experience you will get stable results with 10. Seed, it's a seed value for the start of the random numbers generator. With this, if you run the same function again with the same data, you get the same results, because the starting value for the random numbers is the same. And with print equal true, we would get additional, but I think unnecessary, information while running the imputation. Therefore print equals false. It can take some time. This is a very small data set, so it's quickly finished. 
but for a larger data set, it could take a couple of minutes. First, we will look at which methods for the importation were used. Here, the importation method. For age, there was no method used because age was not missing for any of those 25 cases. BMI, there the method was PMM. That's a method named predictive mean matching. That's the default method used for continuous variables. For our binary variable hypertension, the method was log reg, logistic regression. And for the continuous variable cholesterol, again, predictive mean matching. Later on, I will show you how you could change the method if you want to do that. If you want to look at the imputed data sets, that is, at the now full data sets, you can do that with a complete function. Here the importation number. So this is the first importation of 50, the ID number of the person, and the completed data set. Second imputation, and so on. If we wanted to change the method, we could do that as well. First, let's look at the methods that are available. 33 imputation methods. And now let's change one imputation method. For the last variable, for cholesterol, let's change the method from predictive mean matching to norm, that is a Bayesian regression. Not that I recommend using this method, but just to show how you could change a method. I define a vector for those methods. And for the last variable cholesterol, I put in norm. And then I run the imputation. And in addition to the command we've seen earlier, I've put in one new parameter, the parameter method. And now we see for cholesterol, the method norm was used. For the rest of the tutorial, I will use the default values. That is the first run we have seen earlier. I don't change the method unless I have to. And the main reason why you could want to change the method would be that you want to replicate a study from someone else and they have used a different imputation method. And for a replication study, it could be a good idea to use the exact methods the earlier study has used. Otherwise, I trust this function with its default methods. Before we can run our regressions, we first have to check whether the imputation was successful. There are two things we should look at. First, we want to look whether convergence was achieved. Here are plots for all, in our cases, 10 iterations. And for each of our, in our case, 50 imputation samples, we see how the mean of the variable changes from iteration to iteration and how the standard deviation changes. What we don't want to see here is a trend. If we see that the mean is more or less constantly going down, then we couldn't be sure that maybe it would go down even further with the 11th or 12th iteration. So if we have a trend for one of those variables, then we should increase the number max it, maximum iteration. But here we have just random fluctuations because we have a very small data set, so this looks okay for me. Then we want to check whether we have plausible values. Here we get a plot for the continuous variables. The blue dots are real data from our sample, and the red dots are imputed values. And, and that's a feature of the predictive mean matching, we only get red dots for values of those variables where we ha really have values in our sample. So we only get plausible values. As a comparison, let's look at the second imputation we had run with this Bayesian regression for cholesterol. Now for cholesterol, it looks different. Now there we have imputed values that are not in our sample for the complete cases. That's not a problem per se, because it would make sense that we have in this gap between about 130 and 180 cholesterol values too. However, we could get values that are out of bounds. Here we have cholesterol value of less than zero, and that's physically impossible. But as long as we use predictive mean matching, we can't have this problem because we only get imputed values that at least one person has in the real data set. So now to the second step, running the regression for each imputed data set. That is, in this case, we have 50 imputations. So we run 50 regressions, not by hand, but with a with command. That is, with our imputed data set, in data, we run the regression. And now we get 50 regression results. This is our first regression with the intercept, the regression weight for BMI, and the regression weight for hypertension our second regression, and so on. And for each regression, we get different results. If we wanted to look 
at the regression results of one of those regressions in more detail, then we could do this with this command here. It's important to use double square brackets here. And those would be in detail the results of our third imputation. And if you look here, 22 degrees of freedom, this corresponds to 25 cases. So this is a regression based on the completed data set with 25 cases. And now to the crucial third step, pooling the results. We use the pool function with the fit object of our 50 regressions. Here are the pooled results. Estimate is the regression weight, the B, the unstandardized regression weight, its standard error, its test statistic, its degrees of freedom, and its p-value. If you want to have additional technical information about this pooled regression, you could look at this pooled object. And now you get a couple of metrics about this analysis. If you want to know more about what those mean, you could look at the MIPO object, that is the name of this pooled multiple imputation object. There you would find information about what those different names mean. But I think that's more for those who are very interested in the technical aspects of multiple imputation. In many cases with the regression analysis, you want to report R squared as well, that is the explained variance. You can do that because there's a different pooling function specifically for R squared. Here is our pooled R squared value and a 95% confidence interval for that. Now let's compare those results to the results of our normal regression analysis. Here are our pooled imputation results and here are our results with listwise exclusion. We see we get different parameter estimates, different standard errors, different test statistics and different p-values. And we see that the standard errors with the multiple imputation are systematically smaller than the standard errors with listwise exclusion because with multiple imputation we use more information. One additional important issue that I have addressed in a different video is how to check the regression assumptions because regressions have assumptions and you have to check them. And that applies as well if you use multiple imputation. But how to do that? Because in our example we have 50 samples. With which data do we check the regression assumptions? For that I recommend my video about checking regression assumptions with multiple imputation. You'll find a link in the description of this video. I hope this video has been helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.